<coughs> what up guys, any tier here. I'm or Guild Forever, however you want to call me. We are going to be reviewing the Seven Deadly Sins Season 2 episode um Episodes 14, 15, and 16. I know what you're going to be asking me. What happened to episode 13? So check it. This is what happened. Remember when I told you about my laptop, my old one that broke down? Yeah. On that old one, I recorded episode 13, which means I already had knowledge of that episode. So, for those of you that were expecting episode 13, I'm sorry, the reaction that I had for it is lost. So, yeah, I can't, and there's no sense in re-recording, because I already know what happens. It's not really much of a reaction if I'm re-recording over it. So... Yeah, so we already know what happened there, but we still were able to, but we, it's a good thing I didn't fully react that day, because if I did, everything, three episodes would have been lost, it's only one, so yeah, 13 was lost, but 14, 15, and 16 we were able to do, so okay, so I apologize for that, guys, I really am, I really am sorry for that, but oh well, it is what it is, what can you do about it, you just move on. And I will have to admit though, these episodes were pretty damn good. From Elaine being resurrected to freaking Escanor being a freaking savage. The man killed two commandments by himself. And one of the commandments died because they didn't they were in fear of his attacks. And by doing that, it caused them to turn to stone because of their little Galad game that he was doing and Galand of truth went against his own saying Well, no, he still like even the truth can't No, It's not that he went against his own saying It's that even Even Galad himself cannot go against his principle what his commandment specifies so yeah, he was petrified pretty much and the soul stealing chick, uh, let's just say she got burnt. She, she was not able to digest Escanor's soul, that literally his soul himself burned her alive. That is savage. And at first I thought Escanor was like the sin of gluttony. Turns out that's not the case. So he ends he ends up being the sin of pride. And I'm not going to lie, lie to you. He speaks nothing but pride. But still, I love his character. Like he he he's a beast. I love Escanor. He is a savage. Overall easily the best member of the Seven Deadly Sins. Power level power level of freaking f over 50,000. Not to mention, it feels like his power is like the embodiment. Because even the title, when he when they featured Escanor in one of those episodes, it said Master of the Sun. So is he like, does he hold the power or heat, or is his heat radiance similar to that of the power of the sun? If that's the case, this guy is a... He, he, he's going to beat down everyone. And here's the thing, Merlin, when she was... Honing in on Escanor and reading his power and reading his power level, she said that his power level is at fifty something thousand, and still rising. It wasn't ending; it was still rising, which means 50, 50, 50, 000 is not his peak. Who knows what his peak actually is? It could be it could be fifty five thousand. It could be 60,000 for all we know, but still, at his current level, he is indeed the strongest sin. He will clap the everlasting behind of anyone that stands against him. Unless the commandments still have a few really top contenders there. For example, Seldris, Zeldris, uh, the guy apparently calling Meliodas his brother. He, we don't know his power level yet, and for all we know, he could be a whopping 60, 70, or 100,000, who knows. Unless Meliodas and him are, like, around the same level. And still, that was awesome to see. And then, we get to find out 
that it turns out Dreyfus is not one of the commandments. He is a substitute for one of the actual commandments, the missing one. And it turns out the missing one is actually Gother. I knew there was something I didn't like about that guy. Other than the fact that he's ruining my ship. So yeah. I I, I didn't like him before. I still don't like him now. I hate I don't I like him even less now because of what I found out. So yeah. And he's one of the commandments, bro. I thought he was just a doll created by a powerful wizard. Unless one of those wizards is in fact the, one of the commandments. Or was that a fake information? Still, if he is indeed one of the commandments, then... What the hell? This guy is practically... And he is known as Gother of the Selfish. If he was one of the commandments all this time, why was it never, why did he act it like Meliodas' friend up to this point? It's like, believe it or not guys, I was okay with Gother in season 1. But in season 2, he just got on my nerves. And not to mention, like... How can I explain this? It's almost like his character went to a complete overhaul. No pun intended. For those of you that know uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Point is, he's acting very vastly different from Season 1. But then again, Season 1, we didn't get much of him till like the very end. This would explain why he has some sort of weird, ominous presence to him. I don't know, that's the, that's the vibe I got from him. I thought he was a very ominous kind of person ever since what he did to Seal and her brother, like making them forget each other. That was pretty messed up. That was pretty messed up. So ever since then, I've always thought this guy was some kind of a freak show. Some kind of ominous, something about him I didn't like. This just gave me more of a reason not to like him. Turns out the dude is in fact one of the demons. But then again, here's the thing. Even though he's in fact one of the demons, it all depends how he plays himself out going forward. Uh, like, he could very well, even though he is one of the commandments, maybe he's not a bad guy. It's just the title. But if he is in fact evil or sinister in any kind of way, then he is much as a, he is as much as a threat as the other commandments. We don't even know how powerful he really is. We know he can alter memories, but is that the pinnacle of his strength? I feel like there's more to him than that. But either way, like oof. It's one of the commandments, huh? He's one of the commandments, huh? Wonder when he's gonna show himself to everyone. Do, does, does Marlin know that he's one of the commandments? Does anyone know he's one of the commandments? I know not everyone knows, but does anyone in the sins know that in fact he is one of the Ten Commandments? And if Meliodas did know, I'm sure, he ha I'm sure he's considered something for him. Getting me some good tea. Son of a... I almost dropped my plate. But yeah. Overall. Good. Very, very good. I enjoyed it. Especially with um, this whole little festival thing going on. I hope it's kind of like a tournament thing. Because if it is... Now it's a party. Now it's a party. Can't wait to see that. You know what. So, um, so far it looks like they made it at the end of the maze. It turns out what's going to unfold next. Especially because one of the commandments is in fact Droil? Droil? Mole? Droll? Droll? 
Duro, 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 man, I can't speak. Someone tell me how to pronounce that name. But yeah. Who is pretty much the origin of the giant clan is in legion with the commandments. What the heck? I feel like I should have seen it earlier though. The guy is massively huge. He is about the size of Diana and Matrona. So I feel like I should have peeped that. I should have peeped that, but I didn't. So yeah, he just turns out one of the commandments. And now, the thing, the thing that, the big question for me is that, now that they're all here, what are they planning to do? Is, was this a way just to lure the sins here? That way they can take them all out right here, right now, without having to search for them? Or what was, because I feel like they could search for them at any time. Still though, out of the Ten Commandments, two of them are dead. All, they're, all, all, all they need is to get rid of eight more. Oh, but if it, here's the thing though. We don't know how powerful the other ones are. The ones that have me the most concerned is Zeldris proclaiming to be Meliodas' brother and the guy with the white hair that looks like an older Meliodas. Those two are the ones that have me most concerned. Everyone else like uh, the chick that's covered in demon aura but she's technically naked. I don't know about her. We haven't seen much of her either. One of the, the two the two recent ones that died we've seen the most of. Especially Galad. Galand? Galand was like the one we saw by far the most out of the, all the commandments. Zeldris is just this mad dogging dude that's like, Brother, I'm gonna pay you back for everything you did to me. Brother, 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 what have you done? Brother, brother. Like, it's just a mad dog. That's all I see from him. So, I want to know what's going to become of him in this next, uh, these next few upcoming episodes. I'm very cute. Once again, the two I'm most concerned about is Zeldris and the guy that looks like an older Meliodas, the one with the white hair. Those two are the ones that I'm interested the most. And when am I going to get my girl Diana remembering who she is and her connections with other people? Because the way, I, in my opinion, some people may disagree, some people may not even care. But Diane, King, and Ban are my top three favorite characters in the show. The fact that they made two of my favorite characters who I ship heavy for... Like, King knows, but she straight up forgot all about him. The way that... Freaking Gother, man. Look. What was the point of erasing her memory? What was the point of that? I don't know. In my opinion, it was unnecessary. Like, I feel like the events unfolding right now would still happen with or without her memories unless something happens later on to where that holds some importance so for now i still think it's a stupid idea but depending on how it executes itself it could be good but for now i think it was dumb I think it was unnecessary. I feel like they just did that to troll low key, but whatever. We'll see how this holds importance to the story. If she literally gets her memories back randomly, there was no need to erase her memories to begin with then. It was just it was just literally a waste of time. But it's whatever, it's fine. Everything that's going on right now in the story is literally making me forget the dumb thing they did. Like, everything else is... Ah, like, grade A spicy. But... But just that one thing... I didn't... I, I'm not with that. Everything else is great. It's just that one little thing. But yeah. Overall, I really am enjoying what I'm seeing. 
can't wait to see what happens more of this festival. I'm going to be doing one more reaction tonight. I will be reacting to a movie because I haven't done movie night in like two weeks now. So I need to make sure that still becomes apparent. So yeah. We are going to be doing a movie. And, all I, and for those of you that stayed and watched this video up to this point. I'll give you a little hint. My Inuyasha uh, subscribers and the ones that watch me for that. You guys are going to be very pleased. Alright then guys, that's it for me. See you guys in the next... Oh, wait, forgot my... Uh, uh, questions, questions. What is your opinion of Gother? You like him, you dislike him, you're kind of... You don't really care. Where do you stand with Gother? Tell me, like, you like him, you don't care, you don't like him. Explain to me why. Question two. Out of the Ten Commandments, which one do you look forward to seeing the most in regards to visuals, action, backstory, and feats? I know you guys seen this already, so you probably already know, but still, like, try tell me, explain it to me, but don't give spoilers away. Okay? pretty much it for me guys I'm already like 16 minutes into this video and don't forget to like comment sub if you haven't already really motivates me to put more content out there for you guys as my guildmates and I'll see you guys all in the next video peace